students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week and is looking forward to a very nice weekend, staying healthy, staying strong. Uh, hi, Carolina. Happy birthday. I'm Anjot. Uh, nice to see many students in our class. Welcome, regular students. Hi, Anatoly. Hi, Catherine. In this class, we are looking at speaking, uh, the speaking section, specifically focusing on speaking part three and targeting some fluency and clarity uh, in this part for the speaking section. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please check us out there, do yourself a favor, Join the premium package for general IELTS. Check out gieltshelp.com. We have lots and lots of materials there for you. We're always adding new materials, new blogs, sample essays, sample speaking scripts. You can practice your speaking with other students there as well. Uh, this is the academic uh, the website here with the blue background. You can click that red button to join. And then here is the... A uh, general one here with the green background, and you can click that big red button to join us there. All right, everyone. Let's get back to Target here. Um, so, if you have questions, send me an email. Adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer your inquiries. And... Uh, if you're looking for our exam books, you can find them on Amazon. Search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. Uh, an important piece of administrative note, everyone, tomorrow on Saturday, there are no classes. Usually I have classes on Saturdays, but not this Saturday. Uh, so no class this Saturday. The next class after today will be on Wednesday the 30th at this time, and that will be a speaking part one uh, for everyone, okay? All right, uh, so uh, let's uh, just warm up our speaking a little bit here. Now, speaking part three in your interview takes about the last five, six minutes of the interview, and it's always connected to part two. So the topics for part three are very closely related to the topic of your part two cue card. And we just did the part two cue card uh, class 30 minutes ago with our members. I think many of you were watching that. Uh, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. Okay. And uh, the cue card that we looked at in the last class was this one here. Just read it with me. So describe a beautiful piece of art that you have seen or heard as a painting or movie or music. You should say, what was the work of art? Where did you see it? What made this work of art beautiful? The meaning of this artwork and the impact this work of art had on you. Uh, you will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. You will have one minute to prepare what you're going to say. Um, and so we discussed this last class, we came up with the answer, uh, and we realized that probably talking about a movie is the best choice because movies include music and they're moving pictures, not just a still picture. So there's just more information uh, there, more emotional content. So we chose to talk about a movie called The Pursuit of Happiness, and this was our answer. So again, uh, try not to read. Try to just repeat me from listening. If you have good English, if you're like, ah, oh, my English is band 6.5 or more, then do this with just listening. If you need the script, then read a little bit, okay? And we'll do this together. So here we go. This was the response. So uh, here the examiner would say, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. And then you start. Here we go. A wonderful piece of art that has had a significant impact on my life is the movie called The Pursuit of Happiness. This movie was released in 2003. The story is set um, in the 80s in the city of San Francisco. 
And the main character is a poor salesman who struggles to raise his son as a single parent. And he's played by Will Smith. The directing is by Gabriel Muccino, and he does a fantastic job of bringing the story to the silver screen. The movie was a blockbuster, and along with millions of other people, I'd watched it at the time of its release with my friends and family in our home. We rented it on DVD and watched it together on the weekend. The story is based on the real-life events of Chris Gardner, who became impoverished after losing his life earnings and bad investments, and then he rose to the top of a brokerage firm starting at the bottom ladder, bottom of the ladder as an intern. He was strongly motivated by his son. He wanted to give him a happy and prosperous childhood. The lesson that I learned from the movie is that I have to be determined and focused to pursue my life goals and happiness and to never stop trying. I even took a quote from the movie and wrote it on my office door. When you fall on the ground, fall forward so you can see what you fall on. One of my dreams is uh, to move to Canada and I will never give up pursuing this. And for this reason, I really think that this movie is a wonderful work of art and I highly recommend it to others. Okay, so that's nice, natural, fluent speech. If you're speaking a bit slower, it's totally okay. You don't have to speak super fast to get a perfect band nine fluency score, okay? All right, so that was part two. And now the examiner will say, two minutes is up. Please pass back the card with the questions, the note paper, the pencil. And now we shall continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you uh, some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about art and value. Art and value. Okay, so we're getting right into it. Now for part three, uh, remember to give complete answers. Use what you were thinking about in part two, not just the movie, but what you thought about for paintings or music as well. Okay. And then the examiner says, what makes a work of art valuable? So what makes a lot of a work of art valuable? Give me a nice full sentence answer to this question. So, and again, repeat and speak. So don't just um, repeat the answers, but repeat questions. What makes a work of art valuable and get focused everyone. I see that there's quite a bit of off topic chatter going on as well. Try to focus yourselves. Okay. Focusing is very important in the IELTS to get those higher band scores. You need to really stay in the tunnel of English communication. Okay. Vaishnavi says the idea that the artist makes from his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Arborera says, uh, like the message of this movie, if you have a dream, protect it. Arborera, is that what makes a work of art valuable? What makes it valuable? Okay. Um, Erkin says the idea that's expressed in a piece of art makes it valuable. Maybe. I think that's not very clear. You'd have to explain that, Erkin, a little bit more clearly. Like, what do you mean by that? Oa says um, the speech and the human soul and expression are inside and emotions. Ois, you need to express yourself clear. So if I'm not mistaken, what you're trying to tell me, Ois, is that the uh, emotions expressed by a piece of art can make it very valuable, as in the case with the movie In the Pursuit of Happiness. It's a very emotional movie, and so it's very valuable for people. Is that what you're trying to say, Ois? If it is, you need to say it like I just did, okay? David says, I definitely believe that artwork is expensive because of an exquisite piece of art has unique features of transmitting many emotions and it's uncommon, not, not common, David, but uncommon, uncommon. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a nice answer, David. Uh, like the Mona Lisa. Okay. With the strange smile of the woman, right? Um, Amanjad says, well, I'm not an expert of art, but according to me, if an art is made by using critical thinking, it makes it really valuable. Okay, Amanjad, good. Um, so can you give me uh, a piece of artwork that's 
made using critical thinking. I think some music comes to mind there. Uh, absolutely. Okay, I think that works. All right, so answer, explain, example, students. Answer, explain, example. Okay, that's what we're going for here. All right, Carolina says, if you ask me what makes a piece of art appreciable is not only the meaning that it brings to people, but also a good message, just like the movie Pursuit of Happiness that I'd referred to in part two. Very good, Carolina, good connection. Well done. Uh, Un says, I think the effort the artist put in and the materials that they used to create the work of art um, as the money to hire actresses and actors in a movie that I had mentioned. Okay, Un, that's very good too. That works. Okay, so spending millions of dollars on a movie for professionals to create some original, unique work will make it very valuable. And this is why some Hollywood movies like Avatar are worth hundreds of millions of dollars to produce and billions of dollars in revenue. Very good. Okay, using that quantitative language. Yeah, so I believe that the talent of the artist as well as the powerful emotions that are elicited by a work of art can make it extremely valuable. Like Leonardo uh, da Vinci, da Vinci's Mona Lisa, truly reflects the mastery of the Renaissance style and creates a strange emotion uh, for the audience um, because of Mona Lisa's strange and magnetic smile. For these reasons, this painting is valued at over $600 million. Okay, so there's my answer. Um, and uh, again, I'm focusing on uh, the answer, explanation, and example, and I'm visualizing here, right? So uh, artwork like the movie, um, it's emotional, it makes it powerful, it makes it valuable. Also the quality of the work, right? So the very good acting by Will Smith, the great directing, um, that's what makes it amazing. Here I just took a different uh, example so that we have some variety. Repeat after me, what makes a work of art valuable? I believe that the talent of the artist as well as the powerful emotions that are elicited by a work of art can make it extremely valuable, like Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, truly reflects the mastery of the Renaissance style and creates a strange emotion for the audience because of Mona Lisa's strange and magnetic smile. Uh, for these reasons, this painting is valued at over $600 million. Okay. All right, um, so uh, elicit means that it pulls out. Whenever you see a new word, I uh, would imagine that some people uh, are not familiar with the word elicit. This is a verb, elicit. Elicit means to create, to draw out, okay? Draw out emotions. All right, um, so... Here is the next question. It's kind of a follow-up question. Uh, why are some works of art very expensive while some are not? Okay, so why are some works of art very expensive while some are not? Give me a nice full sentence. Now, notice how this question is looking for some kind of a contrast, like on the one hand and on the other hand, okay? 
Carolina says, well, I've never thought about that. Just let me think for a moment. I agree, Carolina. This is the type of question where you might ask uh, for a little bit of time to think. Okay. So why are some works of art very expensive while some are not? Dhruvi Shangani says, good work of art will become inspirational for many people, like the movie Avatar, <clears throat> made by many people, inspired its outstanding graphics and direction, and of course, hard work. Okay, Dhruvi, um, I'm not sure which question you're answering here. You need to expand more. Amanjot says, uh, well, it depends on the hard work uh, behind the art. Moreover, it also depends on the type of art um, for instance, in this modern era, the picture of famous celebrities is valuable. Okay, Amanjad, I think you're getting a little lost there. Make sure you are clear on what you want to say before you begin speaking. So students, you shouldn't start giving answers before you know what you want to answer. Okay, it doesn't have to be the truth. You have to think clearly and quickly, and it has to be believable. It doesn't have to be true. Abhay says, well, I think some art is expensive because of the story and morals that they want to show or explain us, uh, and more money is invested in the art, like the pursuit of happiness. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see what other answers are coming up. It's a little bit challenging, for sure. Ferdob says, I wish I knew. I consider that some art costs an arm and a leg for most people, because of its age, like the Mona Lisa, which was created five centuries ago, uh, aside from its valuable message. And some art is very modern and hasn't had time to appreciate. So it's much cheaper. Yeah, for doves, why not? That's a good answer. So it's age. I think some art, you, it's one way to look at it. So I think some art, like the Mona Lisa, which is five centuries old, costs an arm and a leg because simply there's not a lot of great art that has survived through the centuries but in the modern times there's so much modern art that it's just not worth anything yet maybe a thousand years in the future it will be okay very good for Dov. so that's quick thinking well done okay go with it saswati says i believe some art is very expensive because they're masterpieces and they're unique like the mona lisa by da vinci however some art is not so valuable because they don't carry a unique message, and they, there are many of them, right? Or many similar pieces of art. Sure. All right. Very good. Abhishek says, well, there are a couple of reasons that a piece of work, artwork, is costly, and uh, such as a lot of time spent by the creator, um, including famous actors, location, storyline. In fact, the movie uh, In Pursuit of Happiness, um, directed by Gabriel, uh, costs millions of dollars to send this inspirational message to people. Yeah, very nice, Abhishek. Um, now, you want to reflect on while others are not. Uh, nevertheless, some movies, uh, like ones that are made on a phone at home, are much simpler. Um, they don't necessarily have such a powerful message or great acting, and they wouldn't be considered uh, very valuable aside from a few views on YouTube. Yeah, so you can contrast movies too, right? The amount of mo uh, time effort that's invested into a Hollywood movie versus the amount of time effort and money invested into a home movie made in somebody's uh, living room or backyard, okay? All right, uh, good, yeah, okay. So <clears throat> I think that some masterpieces are extremely costly because of the talent, effort, and money invested, like the movie I talked about in part two which or that cost millions of dollars to produce. However, many works of art are much simpler 
and demand very little, such as a homemade flick shot in the basement or garage. This simply would not get billions of dollars in revenue. Okay, yeah. Repeat after me. Why are some works of art very expensive while some are not? I think that some masterpieces are extremely costly because of the talent, effort, and money invested, like the movie I talked about in part two that cost millions of dollars to pr uh, produce. However, many works of art are much simpler and demand very little, such as a homemade flick shot in the basement or garage. This simply would not get billions of dollars in revenue. Okay, nice. So again, make sure to repeat. Uh, remember that this class will be available on YouTube later, so you can go back and practice further. Um, here we go with the next question. Do you believe art is a worthwhile endeavor for human beings to pursue? Now in brackets, it's why, because they'll ask you that. If you just say, yes, it is, then the examiner will say, okay, why? Can you give me more details? Um, you should just answer the why, not wait for it, okay? So always answer that why question and express yourself in detail and clearly. Okay. So Owa says, yes, I think art is necessary f for humans because it's food for the soul, which we need in our lives um, to uh, treat our emotions and make us feel pleasure and happiness. Right, Owis? Um, good, Owis, a couple of corrections there. So again, word choice and grammar. Word choice and grammar, Owis, okay? Roshni says, in my perspective, yes, of course. Being determined and putting lots of effort into artwork is worthwhile because a person can earn millions of dollars through this uh, and status, uh, such as one of my friends, Kate, okay? All right, Roshni, it's kind of an interesting answer. So I think most artists do art for a sense of passion and self-expression rather than money, but I'm sure there are some that do it for money. So again, it doesn't have to be the truth. I don't have to agree with you. It just has to be believable. And it's a good answer, Roshni. So it works. All right. An says, yes, I definitely think so, as pieces of art not only contain lots of meaningful stories, but inspire people to perform better in life. Um, in their jobs, and people can earn money. Yeah, absolutely, Anand. And this is where you could connect part two, right? The inspirational movie. It, it, so the movie In the Pursuit of Happiness has inspired millions of people to work hard and achieve their dreams, right? So this would be a perfect uh, place to uh, make that connection. Ferdob says Maslow answered this question many years back. Uh, in Maslow's theory, there are always people who find aspiration from art. Yeah, that's okay for Dobbs. It's okay to quote somebody like Maslow. Um, I would somehow connect that to uh, you, okay? Because it's do you believe, not does Maslow believe, uh, but do you believe, all right? So it's nice that you quoted Maslow uh, indirectly, of course, but uh, say that, you know, and uh, I definitely have to agree with Maslow. Uh, I've been inspired um, like the movie in the pursuit of happiness, right? So that would work well. So make that connection. Keep fluent. Keep focused, okay? Focus on yourself, all right? Okay. Amanjat says, well, uh, from my point of view, um, art is not valuable to choose as a profession because... In this modern technological era, individuals are making more money in other areas, um, but do follow their passions. One can, okay, Amanjot, uh, 
make sure you don't overspeak on manjab because I think the first couple of ideas that you express are very accurate and clear. And then at the end of manjab, it often seems like you're kind of starting to float off into some less related ideas. And you're going to lose marks for that because you lose coherence. It's kind of like, so, okay, in the beginning you answered the question, but now what are you talking about? So uh, don't do that. Don't, don't accidentally start swimming off topic here. Okay. All right. Vishnavi says, well, I do believe I've heard a proverb that a picture can tell many stories. Um, each person who listened to it has to understand the art. Okay. Uh, again, students don't do this. So don't use quotes and such because it's unclear. It can get really confusing, especially if you're not using uh, good grammar or uh, accurate um, idiomatic language. So stay away from that. Okay. Um, it's very, very confusing for the listener. So yes, I most certainly feel that it is a good passion to create art for people as it is the most sincere form of self-expression and has the power to change society like the movie uh, in the pursuit of happiness has inspired millions of people to be the best version of themselves and never give up on their goals. Songs, paintings, and other works of art motivate and influence people around the world every day. And for this reason, individuals should always be excited about creating art. Okay. So there's my answer. Um, just repeat after me. Uh, here we go. So three, two, one. Do you believe art is a worthwhile endeavor for human beings to pursue? Yes, I most certainly feel that it is a good passion to create art for people as it is the most sincere, sincerest form of self-expression and has the power to change society like the movie In the Pursuit of Happiness has inspired millions of people to be the best versions of themselves and never give up on their goals. Songs, paintings, and other works of arts motivate and influence people around the world every day. And for this reason, individuals should always be excited about creating art. Okay, so again, I'm using uh, some very fluent language here for you today. Uh, if you're having trouble keeping up, no problem, don't worry about it, just do your best and then go back, uh, watch the video again uh, later today, tomorrow, and try it again, okay? It's good practice. Here we go with the next question. This kind of question is interesting. They have these in part three where they create a statement and then a question. So here's the statement. Art is displayed in publicly funded galleries and museums all over the world. Do you believe this is a positive usage of taxpayers' money? Again, brackets, why or why not? So here we're getting again into some more complex types of questions. And this is the way the, that part three works in the speaking section of IELTS, is that they go from 
simpler questions to more complex questions. One of these kinds of more complex questions is where you have a statement and then a question related to the statement or a fact and then a question related to the fact. So art is displayed in publicly funded galleries and museums all over the world. Do you believe this is a positive usage of taxpayers' money? Okay, uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this. Ferdov says, I absolutely think it is an excellent trend because there are many taxpayers who love and support art exhibitions as these not only motivate people, but also uh, provide a lot of uh, useful knowledge. Okay, yeah, I think that's great, Ferdov. It's a very good uh, answer. Maybe give an example there and you're golden, okay? Oh, it says, absolutely, art needs to be funded from individuals and from government also because most artists who do not have another job uh, uh, to spend on living and families, so it's required to help them earn a living. Yeah, oh, it's okay, you have the right idea. Again, word choice grammar, but that's why you're here. Un says, yes. I think this trend is for the betterment of not only individuals, but also society as a whole. These money can cover the maintenance cost and protection costs, which would not be possible uh, without uh, government support or without public funding. Okay, ungood. Careful with the end. It's publicly funded galleries. Publicly funded galleries means that it's the public. The public means that it's the public's money through taxes collected by the government. If it's an individual un, so if I'm like a millionaire and I build a gallery, then it would be privately funded, okay? So private is the individual, public is the government. Keep that in mind, okay? Abhe Nathani says, yes, of course, it is the best um, way to uh, solicit art. I would say this because there are lots of people that learn um, many aspects of life and um, also helps to express different thoughts to the public directly and this needs to be supported by the government. Rajveer says, it's an interesting question. I believe it is a positive usage of taxpayer money as it gives a chance for artists to express themselves and motivate people around the world. It provides a chance for entertainment and career opportunities for artists. Sure, okay. Very good, all right. So yes, I support the um, practice of using tax money to fund galleries and museums. as this helps both society to become more educated and grow an appreciation uh, for works of art and history, as well as provides freedom of expression to artists without the pressures of the private sector or sectors. Okay, so here's my answer. Uh, fairly complex, okay. Just repeat after me. Here we go again with the question. Art is displayed in publicly funded galleries and museums all over the world. Do you believe this is a positive usage of taxpayers' money? Yes. I support the practice of using tax money to fund galleries and museums as this helps both society to become more educated and grow an appreciation for works of art and history, as well as provides freedom of expression to artists without the pressures of the private sector. Okay, all right, doing fantastic. 
let's keep going a little bit. So these are challenging questions, and I know this uh, part three is more challenging, but this can happen sometimes. Students, in the IELTS, there is no guarantee that you will get a to the topic of your dreams. I know a lot of students go into the IELTS speaking section thinking, oh, I hope my part three is going to be about environment because I really practiced a lot talking about air pollution and about different ways to save the environment. And then, uh, surprise, you have to talk about aesthetic experiences or works of art. Uh, you have to be ready for anything. So technique is much more important than trying to uh, just practice a specific idea or uh, content, okay? All right. Uh, Romaine says, like we said before, some artworks are extremely costly. As such, common people might find it difficult to aff uh, afford seeing these. That is where the public funding to finance galleries comes into play, making art a shared good for the benefit of society as a whole. Uh, Romaine, that is a beautiful answer for the previous um, question. So well done. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. So aesthetic experiences, aesthetic experiences means, uh, experiences of beauty. Okay. So it means you have an experience of you're like, wow, that's beautiful. Okay. All right, um, let's take a look at this question here and give me a nice answer. So uh, besides works of art, what other objects can a person have an aesthetic experience of? Okay, so besides works of art, what other objects can a person have an aesthetic experience of? Let's see what you come up with for this one. Oh, it says most good artists focus on art only, but other works in the art uh, are maybe career. I know my friend is a doctor. At the same time, he worked as a painter and he has many artworks. Um, oh, it's, I think you're missing the question here. So aesthetic experience means uh, and what other objects create a feeling of beauty. Uh, Amanjat says, beside art, other areas like singing help us to experience, express our feelings, and a song can be regarded as beautiful, right, Amanjat? Okay, so what else can be beautiful? Nick Haim says, computer programming can be a job that requires employees uh, with aesthetic experience. They can create and design many beautiful games and apps, like my uncle. He just joined his efforts to design a game that's very beautiful. Un, exactly, yeah, so games uh, can be beautiful. I agree with you, okay, very good. Don says, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Very nice, Don, that's a nice expression. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This means that beauty is subjective, it's different for everyone. Uh, to some, having an ex aesthetic experience may be encountered when appreciating nature to others, enjoying a play or listening to literary works. Exactly, Don, very nicely put. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There are many different objects which may be regarded as beautiful. such as a rock or a mountain, okay? For others, there may be abstract objects of beauty, like a piece of literature or dance choreography. Okay. All right. Very nicely done. Yeah. So this question, it kind of pushes you to think outside the box. And that's what you want to do is think outside the box. Okay. So open your mind to different ideas. Oftentimes we can go out into nature and there we see many objects of beauty that are not really considered works of art. They're just works of art by nature. Okay. Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. 
Besides works of art, what other objects can a person have an aesthetic experience of? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There are many different objects which may be regarded as beautiful, such as a rock or a mountain. For others, uh, there may be abstract objects of beauty, like a piece of literature or dance choreography. Yeah, so mode, uh, scenery in nature. Absolutely, nature. Yeah, very good, Manpreet. So Manpreet's saying you need to have lateral thinking. Absolutely, lateral thinking. Okay. Um, now, uh, we have a few more questions here, but I'm going to give you an interesting homework exercise that will help you to think outside the box, okay? And you have these really cool exercises in our premium packages at aehelp.com and gltshelp.com. Um, maybe some of you know this, maybe you don't. Uh, try it at home, think about it. So here's your uh, homework exercise to think outside the box. So uh, thinking outside the box, creatively, and laterally is key to getting high band scores on exams, including the IELTS. And you'll find this especially in your university classes as well. Here is a challenging exercise to help you with this. Okay, rules. Connect the following nine dots with straight lines without lifting your with, sorry, four straight lines without lifting your pen or pencil off the paper. Okay, so this is a little interesting homework exercise for you to practice uh, critical thinking. So here, uh, you can recreate this on a piece of paper at home. Um, here, you have basically a box, okay? And this is in line with thinking outside the box, okay? Try to solve this without searching online. So connect all nine of these dots with straight lines. So you cannot curve your lines, okay? They have to be straight lines. So connect all nine of these dots with straight lines without lifting your pen or your pencil off the paper. So your pen or your pencil has to stay on the paper um, without lifting it off. Connect them all. Find um, an exciting way to do this, okay? Um, and uh, figure it out, and that will help you to um, think critically and think outside the box, okay? Um, all right, so if you know how to do it, that's great. You know what I'm talking about, and you know why I'm saying that this requires some critical thinking, okay? So that's your homework exercise, but you says many people know it. That's fine. It's a challenge for those that don't. It will help them with their critical thinking. Uh, that's it for me for today and for this week, everyone. I will be back on Wednesday with uh, part one speaking, okay? Great job, everyone, in today's lesson. And uh, I wish you a fantastic rest of the weekend. For those of you who haven't visited our websites yet, you can do so. Uh, I encourage you to do so. AEHelp.com for academic IELTS, GLTshelp.com for general IELTS. Have an awesome rest of your week. And again, much love to all of you. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Take care, stay healthy, stay strong.